Before the video starts, I'd just like to thank Hubert Mosca, the creator of the game, for helping me behind the scenes for this video to be made possible. Thank you, man. The SCP universe as of late has seen a huge uprising in the video game industry. Whether it be from the starting of Containment Breach back in 2012, which set the internet on fire with it being played by several huge content creators who have built their channels off of horror games, or whether it be simply from just games like SCP Pandemic, SCP Secret Laboratory, or even, you know, my personal favorite, SCP Sculpture Hentai Edition. <laughs> Regardless if you want to agree with me or not, the SCP Wiki hey being launched in 2008, 14 years ago, has kickstarted something so monumental within the video game genre that has piqued my interest long before I even started playing SCP Secret Laboratory or even Containment Breach. The SCP universe is something so special that you can really just create any form of horror story you want, and as long as it is interesting enough or well thought of, then thousands of people will, will enjoy reading your article on some twisted monster you have created. The unique and creative feeling you can get from making your own article is seriously appealing to people, which is why it is so damn successful. But I'm not here to talk about the SCP universe as a whole. That has already been done several, several times. No, my dear friends, I'm here to talk about the game that means so much to me, that means so much to my community. I'm here to talk about a game where it was one person's dream to make a multiplayer SCP game based off of SCP Containment Breach and based off of Gary's mod, then that dream turning slowly into a real life event. Today, my friends, is the history of SCP Secret Laboratory. Now, when you talk about SCP Secret Laboratory, you feel like there isn't really much to talk about. But, there actually is a big portion to talk about in this game. It's not just about one guy deciding to wake up one day and wanting to make a game, just by purely having the curiosity to make one. No, this is a planned thing. You see, before we talk about the game, we need to talk about the person who was the sole reason for this game's existence. Hubert Mosca, at the time, was a 17-year-old Polish developer slash creator and had a big life passion to become a game developer. He began programming and studying his brother's textbooks in 2009 in grade 3, at the age of 9 years old. Then, he began to study programming and through his brother's stuff, he learned Python and C Sharp. In 2016, at 16 years old, he made an online co-op game similar to Golf With Your Friends for one of his favorite YouTubers. Using the knowledge of creating this game, it set the bar in hopes to make a game similar to Gary's Mod Containment Breach, where him and his friends would play all the time. Now, Hubert was a pretty smart person. He thought the game was pretty dull and repetitive, and he personally thought he could do it better. So, in 2017, with the inspiration to make a game like Gary's Mod Containment Breach, he fired up his development stream of a game called SCP Secret Laboratory on March 1st, 2017. Now, this became a pretty good marketing idea. Hubert would stream himself developing and playtesting the game almost every single day. That shows dedication, and sure as hell, this man had so much of it. Streams mainly consisted of what I assumed to be Hubert explaining key parts about the game's mechanics, him answering questions that his chat might have, and him being a pretty funny person to watch, not gonna lie. We have some final questions for today. <laughs> to we'll this was turning out to be pretty amazing, because it meant people were excited to play this game, and people from all over the world, mainly Poland, would tune in to see what he was doing, whether to get insight on the game or how his progress was going. It was a pretty big snowball effect. For the next coming months, Hubert would stream pretty occasionally from March to November. This meant Hubert was pretty interactive with his community, and players adored that. So, Hubert began to obtain a pretty massive following every stream, managing a few hundred viewers, or even thousands for that matter. And once again, it was a successful snowball effect. People were happy. Happy that this man had enough dedication and courage to do this and had a deep caring to it that he would be very interactive within the community. It also meant the big following that Hubert had made him to decide that on March 6th, 2017, he decided to open up an official Discord server for his fans. After months of programming and teaser trailers and development trailers and streams, 
Huber decided to fire up the first official trailer for SCPSL on November 28, 2017. That was also when he decided to give a set in stone release date for the game on December 29, 2017, a full month away. Now, this video was given a big increase in player hype for the game, garnering over 9,500 views in a little over a week. That is pretty good for a developer trailer, especially for a single person developing the game. Comment section was nothing but positivity and Hubert took that as a sign to continue the project at full positive momentum. But with such a short time frame to push out the game, he would have to focus on developing the game more than streaming development, because that does take longer due to having to answer questions. So Hubert decided to tone down the streams to focus on development, and for the next month that is exactly what he did. On December 29, 2017, SCPSL released on Steam as a beta with no price tag, free to play, and not needing a pretty heavy computer in order to play it. Now, content creators love video games, obviously, especially online video games. So the first people to cover it were Neferon, The Volgun, Houston 101, and a month later, Frisky. Now, obviously, being a game developed for months by one singular guy, it will be released in beta with a lot of bugs and a few limitations. And obviously, there were a lot of bugs. That's insane! That's a bug! That's a bug! That is a bug! But firstly, let me go over what was added in the beta. The classes you could play as were Class D Personnel, Scientists, Nine-Tailed Fox, Chaos Insurgency, and most importantly, SCPs. Now, at the start, there were only a few SCPs to play as. SCP-049, SCP-106, and SCP-173. Only three SCPs to play as, not too little and not too much, but little variety in the SCPs compared to the thousands in the wiki. But because this is a multiplayer game, that meant there was voice chat, and you could get some pretty hilarious moments with that voice chat. So. Red Rover, Red Rover, let the SCPs come over so we can kill them, am I right, boys? <laughs> I was kidding! I was kidding! Now back to the first people to play the game. Houston 101 when the game came out, said the game was pretty buggy and couldn't join a server, so he ended up creating his own. Because there was no one else to play with, it was essentially 43 minutes of him just walking around, by himself, like Gmon. But like I said, not the only person to cover it. Neferon covered it and got his own footage in an actual server. He also had the same problems like Houston because again, game developed by one guy. So the servers were pretty unstable, and he said he would play again after the bugs were fixed. And oh boy, did he play again. Like I said, around a month later, Frisky decided to hop on the trend of SPSL. And on January 30, 2018, that's exactly what he did. Now, after me being a pretty large Frisky fan myself, he already made a name for himself using Gary's mod playing with his friends on Sandbox. He had around 100,000 subscribers when he decided to hop on SL, and this skyrocketed the game and skyrocketed his channel. Frisky really liked the game. Like, 167 videos of SCPSL form of liking the game. So obviously, with his already big success, it boosted the game's player count, and with Hubert hyping up the game with his previous streams, this made sure that the game wasn't going anywhere. In the first week of Frisky uploading his first SCPSL video, it got around 40,000 views in less than one week. Now, that might not be that much, but consider that SCPSL came out one month ago, created by one guy. Now, on the same day of the game getting released, Hubert shot out three bug fixes on the same day. Now, in the next two days, he would release two more bug fixes. Then, on January 7th, 2018, he added the Chaos Insurgency van that would go through Gate A to spawn Chaos, a big staple in today's landscape in SCPSL. He also added a remote admin, because the game had a big spike in cheaters and hackers. It was mainly added to manage the server in-game, rather than whatever hosting service the server was using. But, you know, that's really what it was made for. Now, I won't go into every single bug fix or patch notes in the entire game, but I will go over the ones that meant the most and were the most important. For example, on January 15th, 2018, a new community manager was brought, so Hubert didn't have to put in all the effort in telling people these patch notes. But it also gave Hubert a pretty significant idea, whereas he didn't have to create this game alone in order to have traction. He could hire a few people to help him with community things, Discord things, and even programming things. And that, my friends, is exactly what he did.
After the game was released, people began to email Hubert saying that they would love to help him with anything in the game, whether it be development, community managing, YouTube managing, etc, etc. Now, Hubert was quite pleased with how well the game was going and how positive community feedback was that he decided to hire a few of these people to help him with the game. But, small, teeny, tiny problem. Hubert has basically no money. As a 17-year-old high school student, he has no backing nor finance to support the people he hired. But it goes to show, if you have enough dedication and care enough about your game and its community, people will help you regardless if you pay them. The first person to be hired from my knowledge and Hubert's knowledge was The Lion, a community manager who I spoke about before. This thrilled Hubert, as he didn't have to do stuff on his own anymore. And soon enough, people emailed Hubert saying the exact same stuff as before. So, Hubert gradually and gradually decided to hire these people to help him, and it would eventually lead to the creation of Northwood Studios, Hubert's first key endeavor into big popularity and monetization. But again, the problem was funding. How would they continue to get assets or get people to develop the game for that matter? Well, that's when the Patreon came out, a site where you could support Northwood and give them a few hundred dollars per month so they can stop taking container breach assets and make their own. This, again, made Hubert's excitement reach at an all-time high, and from there on, it began to snowball. But community feedback wasn't so great all the time. Not so constructive, but more of insulting, and that hurt Hubert the most. Because people are not willing to put in the effort to require insight about a video game company, or even the video game for that matter, they immediately insult the studio without a care in the world. Now, big AAA companies? Insult is not really a problem to them because there are so many people that A, they're all going to ignore it, or B, it doesn't even reach them. But a game developed by one guy? One dude? Now that's a lot easier to insult, and that's unfortunately exactly what people did. The most insulting thing people said about the game is that it is just an asset clone where you take a game's asset and make it into your own, basically calling the game a clone. And after spending almost a year on the game by himself, this was pretty hurtful. It broke his spirit and dedication just a little bit, because when you have people saying these things, you feel like everyone is teaming up against you. And I can agree. I can agree to a certain extent. It is a pretty hurtful thing for people to shit on something you care so much about, have so much passion about, and yet they still say insulting and hurtful things. But regardless, the negative feedback was mainly constructive, and Hubert with his team took that one into consideration. Feedback is helpful, and it structured the game on how it is today. Speaking of that, we will now move on to the big major updates that the game has received over the last five years. On December 16th, 2018, SCPSL received its first mega patch. It was hyped for months and in development for months, but it was finally released. It re-added SCP-079 with a total overhaul of him. It added a new weapon, the USP, completely dominating against people if you can land headshots. They also added a bunch of weapon attachments alongside changing and reworking them. Cassie was already introduced, but now Cassie gives more detail on how SCPs and how they died. It, was, it also added a ton of bug fixes, which made the game so much better in every single way. On March 22nd, 2019, they reworked the medical system so Medkit's got a brand new, cool looking model, alongside adding SCP-500, which instantly healed you in a quick animation. This made the community very happy, and once again, showed that Northwood had dedication. And at this point, the game was prospering beyond belief. Hubert thought the game would die in a few short months after being released, but oh no, there was so much more to come. On July 14, 2019, Northwood announced their official Mega Patch 2 update where they are going to rework and change numerous things in the game once it is released. And this was the time where I also began to start playing the game, after seeing Frisky played for so long and so much. Then, on November 29, 2019, Northwood released Mega Patch 2. On this one singular update, it changed the game forever, with it adding so much into the game, it, it, it was crazy. So, let me do a quick fire round because there is so much added. Here we go. New locker system, new walled mounted medkits, new SCP-018, the ball, new SCP-268, the hat, new treatment system rework, micro rework, disarmor changes, and a shit ton of bug fixes. Aren't I like missing something important? Here, just, here, here let me have, let me, let me have a look here. So I missed SCP-20. <laughs> I, 
I I missed um I missed the cola. <clears throat> okay, moving. Now you think it wouldn't get more crazy than that, right? You believe that they pushed out everything they wanted and it was done, right? Right? Well, you're wrong because they added a mini patch to the mega patch on December 21st, 2019. Like, how did they even do it? How did they even match? How do you put the, a mini patch into a mega map updates, yearly decoration for Christmas or Halloween, balancing changes, and more bug fixes? It really seemed like everything was done. Like, you couldn't advance more than this, and it was over. The big spread of releases was thought to be over, but oh no, prophecy told another tale. A few months later, on March 7th, 2020, they announced the Scopophobia trailer with a promise that it is coming soon. But, oh no, funny virus time. After a big delay and widespread global panic due to COVID, Northwood was finally able to make a public beta for Scopophobia on June 26th, 2020. And it was, it was, oh my God, it was so bu- But let's look at the good rather than the bad. Scopophobia added one of its most popular additions to the game, rising the player count so significantly and updating the game so significantly as well. It was absolutely crazy, and using the beta as feedback, they publicly released the Scopophobia update on July 24th, 2020. Scopophobia added SCP-096 rework, model and gameplay, spawning tickets, stamina, yucky, a number of different status effects, decontamination timer and displays, alpha war headlights, main menu overhaul, different interactables, and oh my god, so many bug fixes. There was literally a thousand. The game was thriving more than ever. This was also the time 14-year-old me decided to put my love and heart into the game in the Scopophobia update. And oh my god, I do not regret making that decision whatsoever. Now, unfortunately, I do have to add this part in. This guy. He made a video which talked about SCP-096 being overpowered. And this wasn't a very constructive video. It was more of a rude insult to the game. I have thousands of things to say about it, but no. But it was an important part of Northwood's history because a lot of people decided to gang up on Northwood and attack them with these claims. Using more of the community's constructive feedback rather than toxic insults, they used that knowledge for their next big update that would be in a year or so, but not after bringing to the occasional Halloween and Christmas update. Now, I'm not going to get into more of these because they still were pretty significant, but I won't go over them. They weren't that crazy. They're just a yearly edition that just changes a few things and it's a cool event. Now that felt like it was it. It seemed like it was it at the time. Hype died down, YouTube's community died down, and overall everything died down. It was calm for SPSL. A calm before the storm for the next huge update. On February 11th, 2021, Northwood released a devlog for their new update, the gun overhaul update which, in its name, would completely overhaul the guns and make them more realistic and advanced. Oh yeah, this is big brain time. On July 10th, 2021, they once again showed some progress reports on the gun overhaul, showcasing how close it is to being released publicly, but Patreons and partners were able to play. And this garnered Northwood's Patreon like a fucking bajillion dollars. This was a good thing. YouTubers were covering it, like me, and the game was prospering again. There was so much hype for it and little did they know, this album would be a two-parter, because less than two weeks later, another update was announced, called the Parabellum Update. But then on August 21st, 2021, Parabellum's public beta alongside the gun overhaul were both playable and ready for people to play it. Every server registered in the game was full to the brim, not a single server in sight that you could join. It saw one of its biggest player spikes ever, and it was so successful that it was bringing in Northwoods in. 10,000 plus dollars a month. Billionaires. But then again, on October 8th, 2021, Parabellum was fully released with SCP-173's rework. And oh my god, so many new things. We have SCP-173 rework, the inventory rework, gunplay rework, and so many bug fixes. This changed SCPSL forever, completely. But it also, again, had another unfortunate community feedback. A lot of people didn't really like this new update, to a point where veterans started to leave the game and say Northwood and SPSL has changed for the worst. The Steam forums were completely flooded, comment sections despised the update, and people held really bad opinions over 173's new model, and just Parabellum's overall change. 
It felt almost exactly like Scopophobia's update, with people saying it's broken and it was just unplayable. Personally, I recognize it as people not being satisfied with change or development. If we change something they feel nostalgic over, then they won't be satisfied with it. But regardless if they didn't like it or not, this became SCPSL's big major update. It became one of the biggest, but again, one of the hardest since a lot of people didn't enjoy or like the new changes. But unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do, so we're just forced to live with it. It was a big important feature and another big thing for Northwood to overcome because there were just so many people saying these pretty hurtful things and it's sad to see people leave, but you know, if you're gonna give up, so give up on something, then the developers aren't because you know, you don't have the dedication. And this is, you know, pretty much it. You had the Christmas and Halloween updates that really added the same things since last year, except they continue to keep the SCP-330 candies and the SCP-330 room, alongside adding a cool laser gun. We have become pretty much all caught up on the game, SPSL's history. Once a game that was developed by one aspiring 17 year old, estimating that the game would die only after a few short months, ended up becoming an entire company of people helping him on that same very game. Once a dream of becoming a full-fledged, yearly updated game became a very big reality, and it is one of the most popular SCP games to date. Once a game that I wanted to make funny videos on became my life and a lot of others as well. This was the history of SCPSL and I highly thank you for watching this entire video. I really do appreciate you all taking the time to watch my funny and historic video. It was really something I wanted to get off my chest for so long, and I'm very, very glad to have gotten it off my back, finally. It was something truly incredible to learn, because with every game there is an inspiring backstory to it. And this game has one, with a 17 year old dreaming to make a game about SCP, became a reality in one of the biggest SCP games there is, just out there. It was a blast to make this video, and I thank you all for watching. Stay safe, be good people, make good decisions, and I will see you all in the next video, stream, and just in the next one in general. Peace out, boys.